Hello, this is the new Monday show. Don't forget to subscribe. Here are some things that have happened over the last seven days. Last Monday, the world of the celebrity biography took a weird turn when Taliban leader Mullah Omar had a 5,000 word biography of his life released. New research suggested that drug drivers thought that drugs didn't hamper their ability to drive and actually calmed them down and enhanced their ability to avoid accidents. We also thought their hands were weird. On Wednesday, Senator John McCain announced he'll be running for his sixth term in office when he'll be 80, saying he is just getting started, and by that he means painfully urinating for about 15 minutes. 21-year-old Zokar Sarnaev was convicted of the Boston Marathon bombing. The jury found him guilty on all 30 charges, 17 of which carry the death penalty, which was basically a foregone conclusion after Sarnaev's lawyer opened the defence by telling everyone that he was guilty. On Friday, a historic moment occurred when the US president and the Cuban president would meet on a shared platform for the first time since 1958. Like a cheating boyfriend, the US is trying hard to convince Cubans that they've changed, while a lot of Cubans are maintaining a it's not me, it's you stance, contrary to the Romantic Comedy Diplomacy Act I just made up. Tensions in Syria continued as Pakistan voted not to join the Saudis in what is clearly becoming yet another proxy war between Iran and Saudi Arabia. Caught in the middle is the besieged refugee camp of Yarmouk having the temerity to make the West feel guilty about ignoring it for two years. So the news has moved on, but we didn't, and you can look at our first bit of coverage below. Sunday brought the completely expected announcement of Hillary Clinton's presidential candidacy. However, the announcement was clouded by allegations concerning some of the companies that have donated to the Clinton Foundation, particularly oil company Pacific Rubiales, which has denied colluding with the Colombian government to intimidate oil workers. Monday now brings us yet another shooting of an unarmed black man in America. This time, a reserve deputy accidentally shot a restrained suspect when he meant to tase him. During the exchange, the suspect says he can't breathe, to which one of the officers politely responds. My breath. Your breath. One recurring theme seems to be violence against suspects that are already restrained. Quite why you need to tase someone who's already got a guy's knee on the back of his head, I don't know. That was the Monday show. Please subscribe. Or something like that. I haven't actually written an end.